corpses. We haven't written much lately. There's been a strain. He's your brother. He used to be your best friend. There's a lot of used to be in my life. Oh, there he is. It's Joseph. Julia. Hi, Joe. <laughs> I didn't expect you here. John and I, well, with his sickness, we're back at the mansion house. Once he realizes that alcohol is not medicine, you'll be out of there soon. Joseph. I wish you and John could get along, Joseph. He's done a lot of hurtful things, Julia. I know. Trying to turn a man's friends on him because of his religion? John has his prejudices. Well, what a family to marry into. We weren't Mormons then. Well, we've always been Mormons. At that point, we were ambiguous. Well, <laughs> we're certainly Mormons now. You're Mormons now. What we all are is a family, John included. Joseph, look at me. My position has changed everything, Joey. As much as I don't like what it's done between us. It hasn't done anything, just a few bucks. I have responsibilities now, Lord. I'm still your little juice, aren't I? Is he good to you? My life with John is complex. But how is it any different than the rest of my life? It is good to see you. Thank you. Well, we have an announcement. An announcement? You don't mean. We weren't sure when we should. I mean, we talked about waiting to tell people. We're going to have a baby. A baby. <laughs> a baby. Clara, <laughs> you and I need to talk. You rascal. It has been a bright ray of sunshine during the stressful time. It's stressful? Well, what with Alexander and his family moving back in, and Julia and the conflicts with her husband, and Popeye and Lenora and us all around. He's quite upset to know the church isn't giving us the opportunity to work. You and Alexander are needed by the church. And yet the church can only afford to pay one Smith son. Think that that's not fair. I wasn't criticizing. God wants us to be unemployed, we'll be unemployed. Unemployed, but very busy with the church. You seem tense. I am tense. <laughs> Always the sensitive one. And poor Clara. With all the emotions of a mother-to-be and the inexperience of a newly wedded one. Well, the women need to make sacrifices as well. Uh, we men are the amateurs on that subject. She's not at all happy about me being called to go Midwest with you right during the midst of her carrying the child. And are you happy to be going? Overjoyed. Good. <laughs> mother. She wrote, she said that you've gained a nervous intensity. Has she now? She said you lost much, much of your gentleness. I have gained confidence. That's all. I can tell people what I think now. That's all it is then. How is your health? Ah, oh, the, 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 the pain near my heart. What, whatever it is, it's much lighter now. Let's get some lunch. Lunch would do nicely. We're getting some lunch. Oh, uh, something lighter, please. My stomach's been feeling it. We've got to make it easy on the newest Smith. I'll collect you back, Sarah. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Once again, the wanderer. Outward bound. I still look to the time when the Lord will speak to David. <coughs> he has got to repent of his sins, turn away from evil, and cease to do iniquity, and learn to do well. It would be his right to preside over this church if he would only walk in the path of duty. I pray night and day that he and the whole family may become a holy family. But as the sun shines, the grass grows, the water runs, and the earth remains, young Joseph Smith will never be the president of the Latter-day Saints. But David, who was born after the death of his father, I still look to the day when the Lord will touch his eyes Salt Lake City. Come in, come in. Thank you. Can I get you something to drink? Uh, no, thank you. I'm fine. Cider. You must at least have some cider. I'd offer you something stronger, but I'm in enough trouble with the church as it is. That's actually, <laughs> actually why I want to come see you, Vanessa. Because of my troubled relationship with the church? Well, I figured you would give me an unbiased view, having been dropped from the Brighamites Quorum of Apostles. But not excommunicated. Yes, not excommunicated. Not yet, at least. <laughs> You were valuable aid to Alexander and I in the past. 
I was hoping that you would give me some straight truth if I were to ask you some questions. David. Can you do that for me? Well, yes, of course. How do I approach this? All right. I have been told that your wife, your plural wife, that Eliza Partridge had been married to your father. Yes. You seemed antagonistic to the idea before. That was before. What changed? I insisted that Joseph send me on another mission. I was, I was becoming so obsessed with the idea of coming back here. He denied me for so long, but finally he absconded. I told him that I thought we were letting the very best time by us for a raid on Utah. I think you'll find the Brigham mindset just as bullheaded as ever. Is there a reason for that bullheadedness? The idea was haunting me. Go to Utah. Go to Utah. What did God want for me here? To teach? Or to be taught? If, if my brother is right, and if my father never practiced polygamy, I will preach against the idea until the flesh rots off my bones. And if your brother was wrong, then they have made a liar out of me. You're entering a complicated world, my boy. Was Eliza Partridge my father's wife before she was yours? Yes. What, um, what proof can you give me? Your father taught me the principle what himself. What proof can you give me? A master! You don't know what this is doing to me. I, I must know this. But for the sake of my whole inner world, I must know this. I, I'll let you talk to my wife. Then I can make a list. I can get you the names of your father's other wives. Go to them. Talk to them. I don't know what to believe anymore. I know that feeling very well. <laughs> Not much, just your claims. Can I enlighten you? Go ahead. 
I'm the daughter of Hebert and Violet Kimball. You have heard of them? Of course. Uh, your father was in the First Presidency when, uh, when he died. He and your mother were my father's friends. Two of his most trusted friends. Yes, I know. Your father taught my father the principle. My father didn't take it well. He had always been strictly obedient to Joseph, but polygamy? That hit him hard. And Joseph made him promise to keep it a secret, even from my mother. That can't be true. My father was honorable. He was he honest. Was also a prophet of God. He had to protect God's work. Do you understand that? No, not at all. How can God command someone to do something dishonest? Dishonest? <laughs> not dishonest. The most honest. A man who knows his priorities is the most honest to his God and the most worthy. Hey, him. I was telling a story. <laughs> Excuse me, Helen. My father submitted, but not happily. He wasn't eating, he wasn't sleeping. My mother was very worried, but my father couldn't say a thing, you see. So mother took things into her own hands. She prayed and God answered. She had a vision of celestial marriage and my father's second wife, Sarah knew. And she accepted it, just like that. Wouldn't you, after a vision from the Almighty God? How would I know that it was from Almighty God? If you can't recognize the gifts of the Spirit, David, I don't see how you can expect to understand. <laughs> Excuse me. The answer to your question is actually no, David. My mother obeyed the principle, but her heart was another matter altogether. Violet was one of the most staunch of the faith. Yes. At a cost. What the Go on. The worst came for me and for my mother when my father offered me as a possible wife to the prophet. You must understand, I was very young. Oh. You must also understand, Joseph and I did not physically live together as husband and wife. I was too young. But through me, my family was sealed to the prophet and promised the blessings of exaltation. For this reason alone, I agreed and married him. But then you, you didn't. I mean, the marriage, it was never. No. But don't misunderstand me. The marriage cost me dearly. Wait, in, in what way did I it... lost my youth. No one at the time could have influenced me or, or brought me to accept of a doctrine so utterly repugnant to my former ideas and traditions except my kind father. Then, then you doubt. You rebel. Of course. If I had not heard it from my dear father's mouth, I should never have accepted it as God's sacred truth. <coughs> Eliza, can you take over? Yes. Of Wait, I, I just had one I more understand you're not for yourself. Make use of that quality now. Of course, I, I apologize. <coughs> now, you must understand, for some, like Helen, this was a great sacrifice, but for me, it was the greatest blessing of my life. I find that hard to accept. I resisted at first when I started hearing the rumors. I thought it was repugnant. And are you sure that you weren't wrong? I decided that if this were the time when all things were to be restored, that meant all things, including the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This was all very intellectual, distant. When I was actually confronted that I would be living the principle, that was very different. But as I gained knowledge, I grew in love. And today is seen it as a precious, sacred principle. How can you say that? How can any woman say that? Seeing how it demeans your sex. David. No, Mrs. Whitney, I will not hear any more of these false accusations about- I, I agree with you, David, once. Then it was a mistake for you to relinquish to the lusts of wicked men. Wait, call me yourself. Call. You, you tell me that my father was not who I thought him to be, and then you asked me to be called. Precisely.
All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Even after Joseph's death, I rebelled in my heart. Even after I remarried my sweetheart, Horace, I resented that I wasn't his and his alone. That I would only be his wife in this lifetime. That me and my children were sealed to the prophet for eternity. And when I saw the pains that still tore and ravaged at my dear mother's heart, I steeled myself against it all. I was filled with darkness and despair. Good. Good, I say, and Mrs. Whitney, if you allow those feelings <laughs> back into your heart and see how you have been misused, you will find people who can accept you with open arms and bring you back into a righteous society. No! Mrs. Whitney, if this principle has caused you so much pain, why on earth would you defend it so vehemently? I defend it because I have had a witness of polygamy that I cannot deny. When I was at Winter's Quarters, I lost my first child. And then on the trail to Utah, I lost my second. I was filled with despair. I prayed to God to take me to my lovely, sweet little ones. I was very sick, and I expected to get my wish. <coughs> For three months, I lay a part of the time like one dead. In that season, I, I forgot my, I, I, I lost my speech, I forgot the names of everything and everyone around me and was living in another sphere. I have tasted of the punishment that is prepared for those who reject the principles of God. At last, I resolved that the evil spirit should buffet me no further. I fasted every day for a week, and every day I gained till I had won the victory. I was just as sensible of the presence of holy spirits by my bedside as I had been of the evil ones. I called my mother to my bedside. I knew that her heart was weighed down in sorrow because of polygamy. I told her that father loved her, but that he had her work to do, and she must rise above her feelings and seek for the holy comforter. And though it rent her heart, she must uphold him, for he had only taken wives in obedience to a sacred principle. My strength returned in that instant, and I was healed. Eliza, I'm feeling much better. I'm sure you find that to be very inspiring. However, more however's. I still cannot see how the holy monogamy between one man and one woman, like Adam and Eve, should ever be overthrown for such a wretched principle of oppression. Oppression? Can you deny it? I have seen how the women here are often neglected, how their rights are taken from them, how they dwindle in sorrow. David, where is your wife? What? Your wife? Is she here with you in Utah? No. But you have left her in comfort. She is with mother. <laughs> she and your mother have a good relationship? Not precisely. But your, her care has been your number one priority. I am busy here. And this is the glory of monogamy. This is different. I am doing this. For the Lord? Yes. Sounds familiar. What of your stepfather, Louis Biden? The Major has nothing has to do Has he been good to your mother? As good as anyone can I understand be. he had an affair. That is true. And that your mother, bless her heart, has taken the illegitimate child in and is raising him as her own. And that she brought in the mistress as a servant so she could support herself. That is also true, but you, you don't- cast insults and aspersions on us, and you turned a blind eye to what is happening in your own home. But you don't understand, that's not the ideal. I think we're done here. Wait, David, please, one more. No. Please, David, your father. <laughs> when your father died, I was devastated. I wanted to die, too, so that I could be with him. But your father, his spirit, came to you, 
What? He said to me. My work here is completed as far as my mortal tabernacle is concerned. But yours, Eliza, is not. The Lord desires you, so does your husband, to live many years to assist in carrying out this great work. Take courage, my darling. Think not of your own loneliness. Instead, help others with their sorrows. Mrs. Young, I think sometimes we give too much credence to dreams. This was not a dream. So you say. David, when you were born, I wrote a poem for you. <laughs> for me? Even then, we had high hopes for you, David. May I recite it to you now? That is... Yes. Sinless as celestial spirits, lovely as the morning flower, comes the smiling infant stranger at an evil omen hour. An hour of lamentation in a time a season when Zion's noblest sons have fallen at the hands of wicked men, in an age when saints must suffer without mercy or redress, comes to meet the generation that is left in fallenness. Not to share a father's fondness, not to know its father's worth, by the arm of persecution, 